Hello and welcome to another, yes, another, another heaping hearty serving of owlbear soup. <laughs> I'll be uh, <laughs> one of your cooks today. Uh, my name is Justin and uh, joined, joining me today is my uh, head shoe chef, shoe chef, shoe oh, oh, wow. chef, uh, uh, Richard uh, uh, Melina Weber. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That that was an intro i love that um i i like the idea that we are both the sous chefs for uh for chef owlbear d who really runs this show that's <laughs> you know that's that's abs that, that is absolutely true i believe yeah. uh we we are his sous chefs although that's really hard to uh that's hard to say um but we do know what is in the in the soup now and uh yeah right. no 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 remember when when right. he told us he told us that the secret ingredient was Wait. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Not, so yeah, so, you just grate it. You grate it a little no, no, bit and you what? toss it in the stew and it's great. So can you say that one more time? One more time oh, just, for, yeah, yeah. just for everybody at home. I oh, you're yeah, a little yeah, you're a little yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh how oh, it's not yeah. yeah All right. You well, I don't know what we're gonna do about that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amazing. <man>. Amazing. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Well, oh, um, at, at least we know that there is uh, one eyeball and the end of a bone, at the very least, uh, in this congealing mass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe that'll get you started. Actually, don't. Don't let that get you started. <laughs> <laughs> it's not where you want to begin with a soup. <laughs> no, no. Um, well, welcome to another uh, episode of Albert Soup. We are going to... Uh, we have we have fantastic guests. Uh, today, we have uh, Grandmaster Keith uh, Baker. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> and, the Grandmaster of the Thunderdome. <laughs> the Grandmaster of the Thunderdome. And we also have uh, the amazing volunteer wrangler, uh, Dickie Adams. Uh, Dickie Adams is a fantastic photographer. He is also a fantastic game designer. But today we are going to be talking about conventions. And, uh, right, right. And, and, and this is going to be, be kind of a theme going forward. I'm looking forward to talking about more conventions as they come up. And uh Yeah. I, I, and I have some news about that today, but oh, first, good, good. <laughs> but first, <laughs> uh, yes. man. So, uh, yeah, we didn't have Paizo, our, our Paizo. We didn't have our Pathfinder two game this week. I know. So, so all my gaming has been done on Destiny. Uh, oh, and, fair. And, and Ghosts of Tsushima. And uh, so beyond that, uh, Rich, what do you what do you have what do you have cooking? I'm going fuzzy. I see it. It's better. You're awesome. Yeah, I'm on top of it. <laughs> you are cooking well. Um, so so this week is has been a big week. It was the end of. I mean, besides the fact I didn't see our game was canceled until just a few minutes before it started. <laughs> um, I was so excited. Um, but this week has been the end of season five of the Academy of Adventures, right? Um, mm -hmm. which uh, is my game for kids, right? I run uh, up to ten sessions of one storyline for five weeks then we drop it and we've got a new storyline going forward and uh, this was the end of the season of the golden games and uh, and actually i need your help so <laughs> Ooh. my help so, uh, or, or yes or, or, no or the audience's well, help and it could be anyone it could be anyone <laughs> um here's the deal i uh you know you you wrote for organized play right so yeah. organized mm -hmm. play you have you have a narrative that's going to go forward and sometimes single parties will have different things happen, but they have mm. to get to the same place in the end, right? Yeah. Um, so in, in this one, uh, this season, they were basically, they went to the Olympics and this this creature showed up and turned it into gladiatorial combat, right? Turned it into the Coliseum, uh, which was fun. <laughs> um, they're like doing all these fights, all sorts of things, but they also hate the person who put them in this position. Um, and as the story continues, they find out that this person is auditioning, basically, to become the uh, the new god of conflict. Okay. Um, we're kind of in the Forgotten Realms, so it's like stealing it from Cyric a little bit. You know, I did this whole ascension thing, um, and that's what was happening. And so as in the end, they're battling this red dragon, like in one of these gladiatorial fights while this character is ascending, um, basically. And they, they can weaken them a lot, make them a weaker deity, and they get rewarded by Ilmater at the end of it for like persevering through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so digging in some Forgotten Realms deities in there was a lot of fun. Um, 
but I had one character in one of the sessions. Everyone gets a reward. They all got a bonus feat. They like gave him some extra spells and like a stat point. So uh, it was a big deal from those deities. And but one character decided to do something different. They uh, they climbed up the leg of the, the like new deity as they were ascending, uh-huh. and I was like, so they they get like you know beamed up and they're they're gone. Um, do you let go? And they said no. Uh, and in fact, <laughs> as it continued, they continued like attacking this deity. Just as I don't know, I didn't write that part. They were transported to distant plains, like fields of battle in uh, 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 I don't know Elysium. I don't know where we go. Yeah. Um, um, when uh, Ilmater like did some cleanup work, and the the games were kind of fixed, and they could continue the Olympics, and I had that character come back. But what what do I don't know what to do with them. Are they like, what kind of a reward could I give them that is like on par with a bonus feat that gives you like two spells and a stat point, but reflects mm-hmm. like a journey through the planes, like punching a deity, like seeing other deities, maybe, maybe it's too much for their mind to handle, but uh, what could you, I do? Yeah. Uh, no, this is, this is going to be great um, to kind of think about. Cause there's, there's a lot of options here. You don't want to overpower. You don't want to give them no. something too powerful. Where it's I mean, like, my kids are powerful. <laughs> yeah. I'm a monster. <laughs> you are a monster. But you're right. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the thing that I, I enjoy doing sometimes personally is um, give them the normal feat reward, like, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, their, their character gets maybe uh, um, the occasional vision, right? And cool. you, and then you just decide when they get that vision. So it's like it's coming from the deity, um, that type of stuff. That that's that's where okay. I would go. Uh, but you know that does involve extra work for you. And that's in an fine. and in an organized <laughs> place sense, uh, what? Oh yeah, no, I like what Dickie Adams said. Uh, he gets a participation medal, and once per day they get a bonus uh, for intimidating yeah. performance or intimidation rolls. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, this is this is one of those cool things that uh, in uh, Ashes of Athos, when we did Ashes of Athos, we had some really cool kind of secret certs, right? And okay. and and so you got these secret certs by doing certain things. Most of the time, was having your character die. Um, if your character died in this adventure, then you get to unlock the ability to play a special special race. So something like a right. Minotaur, or um, you know, or you get a metal weapon. So you you could do something like that and then you could even plan it out for forward and you could like come up with interesting secret certs that the the kids can continue to collect as you go through right um and Al, uh, alpha stream one uh teos in the chat says death certs are one of the best things he made up um i mean yeah that's a super I smart way to do it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep looking at that with uh, with Pathfinder Two as well. I'm making a an NPC, and they have the uh, you know their their long list of, of ancestries, but there are certain of them that they want to be more rare in the campaign world because they represent mm-hmm. people not in like the core region, I guess, of the game. Uh, yeah. And I love those, like adding in some of the the you know your chance to play a monster. This time you can be like a um, a sh- or a shade. There we go. Oh. Mm-hmm. I would kill to play a shade. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so I could do something like that. I think some sort of secret cert um, idea. Yeah, I just I just want something that reflects the fact that they would not stop. Like this rogue, it mm-hmm. was like no 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 no, you're not getting away from me. Um, seems like it's worth uh, a little bit extra. So okay, yeah, you know I, I know, and, you know in in it could be reflected it to their tenacity right like mm-hmm. uh you know once per session when you fail a con save uh you get to reroll it right you know simple yeah. simple as that uh and that's not that's a little 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 bit of extra boost but it's not so overpowered that yeah, right and based on the way this character was playing like i imagine that they are a you know a heavy con character already anyway so, <laughs> i mean so, so, so it's a little bonus, right? <laughs> you know, it's it, it's yeah. something that they should have been able to pass, but they right. didn't pass. So now they get this little bonus. And, I like that. Uh, that's that's. I, I think that's the route I would take. Okay, so I may I may rewrite that bonus feat so it's a little more specific, tailored to that character, but doing something yeah. similar, and then add a little boon like that on top of it. That sounds good. Um, yeah, I wasn't gonna make them the new. You know, they're not a deity now, but no. <laughs> I want I want a little bit of that in there, little taste. 
Yeah, okay. yeah, and, and and you do things, and you and you put a little note in there, like you know, once you reach level eleven, you get this, and once you reach level twenty, you become a you know an avatar of the god because you know sure, you're not yeah. going to go that far. But right, yeah, we're stopping <laughs> at seven. So yeah, 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 yeah. the the next boost happens at eight. <laughs> Her, ooh, that's good. I'll write that in there. You know, um, <laughs> when it when it, whenever your character dies, they get to skip the petitioner line, go right to the front. And now they're super. Like <laughs> yep. Exactly. You're, you're a, a rogue astral diva. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so great on the afterlife of D and D, but <laughs> right. Yeah. It gets, it gets a little we'll longer. Yeah. Um, all right. Cool. All right. <laughs> so, well, we, 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 we solved that problem. I think it's, it's time to go. I'm feeling confident. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's jump into our news. All right. Um, so uh, I think, I forgot how it was going to go. I think I said I was going to kick it off. Yes. Take it away. Uh, so <laughs> first thing I kind of want to talk about, this This looks pretty interesting to me. So on May 26th, uh, Kobold Press is going to be releasing a Kobold, uh, the Kobold Guide to Monsters. So this is monster creation rules and insights for uh, tabletop RPGs. Um, so this book contains rules uh, and philosophy and, and around like, creating monsters and how to design monsters based on mytho uh, yeah, mythology, literature, or even pulp culture. And, you know, talks about balance and how to, um, you know, uh, you know, re, re, uh, reconfigure monsters so that they fit your genre and yeah. all kinds of cool stuff like this. The thing that, that, that really stands out to me is, is the authors that they got to, to join in on this, which is, uh, you know, Monty Cook, who, who's, who, who, because a Planescape is one of my favorite authors, uh, Wolfgang Bauer, who um, you know is is you know the the <laughs> man behind Cobalt, uh, right. <laughs> Steve Winter, Celeste Conowich, and uh, Crystal Fraser as well. So uh, Steve Winter, he I, is is that Mistra? Is that Steve Winter? Oh, uh, shoot! I even just read some news about that setting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. There, there is some news about it, but it's a little fuzzy. So we'll report yeah. on it when it gets a little bit closer. Because down I the road into that as well. Yeah, Which Celeste. We're going to talk on. about. Oh, fair enough. Uh, we'll talk about Celeste in just a little bit, actually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is very cool. I love these. I have. I was just looking for my copy of the the Cobalt Guide to um, Game Design. Right. They're they're amazing books. Um, I love the essays. Like they come from all all these different viewpoints of what they find important in these things. Like it's mm -hmm. it's incredible. If you are up for writing some monsters, this this is going to be a book you're going to want. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, on the, the Celeste note, uh, I'm really excited about a, gosh, you know me, um, a Kickstarter that is open right now. It's Venture Maidens. And I am I like this because it is a campaign guide based on a streaming world. Uh, you know, we got uh, a few of those, of course. We have our Critical Role book out there in the world. But this one is, uh, I'm very excited. Venture Maidens is uh, is entirely led by women. Um, and Celeste is the, the writer of the whole darn book. Um, I I just I just want to support this like absolutely not only is it a, a great stream and a lot of fun to watch um, but this book sounds like a lot of fun getting to play with uh, y uh, their heroic destiny system that they'll be adding plus new subclasses monster templates magic items I mean it's it's a campaign guide it's it's got tons of information that you're going to need to run your game in their world um, and as usual things are are pretty cheap honestly uh, if you are looking for that uh, the digital copy of the PDF is just going to be eighteen bucks when it comes out. Um, prints up at 45 um and of course the collector's version and all the rest it's a kickstarter you know yeah um the dice whatever add-ons you want but uh it's just a cool thing and a cool way to support i think streaming um uh uh gosh actual plays there we go yeah. you know <laughs> uh check it out and that's 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 a, uh, an interesting thing to kind of break up because you know we 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 are a, a a network that does our own streaming actual plays, and I think I think it's important and 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 the philosophy around here is is that, um, uh, you know, rising oceans lift ships or or what is it like the the more we all help each other out, the better it's going to be for everyone. And Justin, so, I come to yeah. you for boat metaphors. <laughs> huh? I come to you for boat metaphors. I mean, yeah. I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, speaking of boat metaphors, this has nothing to do with one. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, in my head, oh my god, it was just right. A rising tide sinks all ships because they're scary. But that's not how it goes. <laughs> wait, is, is it a rising tide sinks all ships? I thought it was it a rising tide lifts all, all ships. ships. Yeah. 
but I'm scared of the ocean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's a metaphor? Uh, I like the ocean. Okay, so anyway, here we go. Uh, speaking of oceans, uh, that has nothing to do with this. So con season. Well, this normally would be the time of year where we'd be uh, looking into which different conventions we're going to be going to. We're going to be, you know, Rich and I would be talking to our partners, figuring out which conventions they're going to. Mm -hmm. um, but this year, 2021, for the most part, we're still in that online era. Uh, what we see is we see PaizoCon online is going to be uh, May 28th through 31st. Uh, that's the more of the, the international or U.S. version of it. And then the PaizoCon Europe online will be August 19th through 22nd. Um, and then, of course, we know about Gen Con and Gen Con online, which right. Paizo will be there as well from September 17th to 19th. Uh, Gen Con official does seem like it's going to be the first kind of gaming geek convention uh, that that I would consider going to, but ev even that, it's it's, it's going to be too close for me. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no. So this is this is interesting. Uh, Paizo posted they are looking for uh, GMs for Gen Con. So uh, if you're interested in any of those cons, definitely go swing over there and check that out. And oh, uh, yeah, it's fun to be talking about cons again, even if it is just online. It is. There's a big part of me that misses running RPGs at conventions. Like demoing games is so much fun and allows you to like share your your favorite thing with people who might not know about it or or need that intro in. Conventions has always been like one of the number one ways to do it. I mean, I certainly done it at gaming stores as well, but mm -hmm. I, I love cons because you're coming in. What experience is gonna have at this magical Gen Con? Um and you're gonna sit down and play a game. It's gonna be awesome. Right? Yeah. 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 And then, um, you know, just kind of stick on the con thing. I'm going to jump over Rich and make him uh, scramble because I'm away. going out of order. Uh, Gamma, so the Game Manufacturers Association uh, convention, they have announced when their expo is going to be in 2022. So for those of you who, uh, who, who can get in, uh, it's going to be from March 14th to March 18th in Reno, Nevada. Um, actually, it, it, it's going to stay at the Pepper Mill Resort and Casino for another year. Well, that's that's pretty cool. I'm I'm I've uh, I would love to go to Gamma sometime. Me too. It's kind of like there's a couple of cons that feel like they are meant for the people, and there's a couple that feel like they're you know geared towards towards publishing, and they're going to have like the talks that I really want about game design and crunchy stuff like that. Yeah, um, that's what I'm all about. So I want to get to Gamma someday. Yeah, <laughs> I well. I uh, I agree with Dickie Adams in the chat. In the, in the chat, uh, road trip to Gamma. Let's do this. Run, Let's do this run through LA. It's on the way, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 swing through we'll swing through LA in our uh, Studebaker. And, yeah, we'll do a whole uh, Southwest tour. Take Route Route sixty six all the way, <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Wait, Perfect. Sunset in the east. Uh, <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, yeah. So cool, cool. cool. Well. Uh, my next one is uh, is while we're still here in non-con season, um, there's a humble bundle up right now for new and classic comic books uh, based on Dungeons and Dragons. Um, humble bundle is really cool. It's uh, you know you pay a little bit of money, a bunch of it goes to charity, and you get a ton of stuff. Usually, um, stuff that is. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Slightly out of print sometimes, sometimes brand yeah. new stuff. Uh, but mm -hmm. this is great. I mean, the, the comics that they have here are from stories that that I love. Um, we've got, uh, you know, Dragonlance classics in here. Um, we've got some Baldur's Gate. There's definitely the the evil at Baldur's Gate with, uh, with uh, oh my gosh, Minsk and Boo right on the cover. Yeah. Which that one is last year? That was, I'm uh, not sure. Was that last year? I think, well. <laughs> <Was it> this year? <laughs> I think it was two years ago. Okay. I don't I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. I just remember I picked up that one. I was pretty excited. Fair enough. About it. Uh, I'm very excited because, of course, my favorite uh, Dragonlance story, the first one I ever read is The Legend of Huma, and that's here in comics form. Um, if you are at the $18 mark, which at that point you're getting 10, 18, uh, like, you know, 23 comics. <laughs> It's great. It's a good deal if comics are your thing and you want to experience uh, stories from all over the uh, campaign settings of D&D. Yeah, and I'll be picking that up mostly because I've never picked up the Dragonlance uh, comics, so I've never read those. I, I, my, my association with Dragonlance is so thin. Oh, they were the first books I ever read. I mean, when I was still just like, oh, the Player's Handbook, that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. Dragonlance was first, so it's Streams kind of, of got a soft spot for yeah. me. <laughs> Streams of Silver was first for me. Okay, I mean, fair. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Um, let's see. I have one more piece of news for us, and then I think okay. Richard has a. Has, has I got one more. more. Um, so uh, the Ruby of Phoenix, or the Ruby Phoenix. Sorry, the. Uh, let me start that over. <laughs> the Fists of Ruby Phoenix Player's Guide is now available on Paizo. So um, what this is, is this is uh, some additional rules for the Ruby Phoenix tournament. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it talks about the, the history and talks about some of the big NPCs. It talks about adventuring in the Dragon Empires. Uh, there's uh, some new um, interesting backgrounds for your characters as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it has, uh, and, and, and the author, I saw them post about this on Twitter, they, they, they wrote something for forming a fighting team. So this includes inspiring tables to help you randomly or deliberately choose your team's theme, motivations, mm -hmm. strengths, weaknesses, quirks, and more. Um, and that's, oh. that's the part I'm pretty interested in. Um, yeah. And this is, this is the, the, the player's guide for uh, the uh, Pathfinder Adventure Path uh, 166, which is Despair on Danger Island which will be coming out, uh, they say, around May 5th. So, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is so exciting. I Back in Pathfinder 1, uh, the let's see, the Ruby Phoenix tournament was, I think, a level 11 module. Mm -hmm. So it was meant to take you from 11 to 12. Um, and it was amazing, right? It was you were a an agent of the Pathfinder Society sent out to Tian Sha to... to uh, participate in this tournament as one of the teams um and it was wild it was filled with all of these incredible fights you know fighting on on huge platforms spinning blades i mean the whole deal uh that you would want out of uh out of classic movies it was a ton of fun turning it into an ap like changes so many things like i i believe that one of the intents of the ap is that you are from the region you're not you know journeying from the west or something like that that's not going to be part of of this storyline necessarily and i love that i love that it it create some fixes um and uh and still gives you the chance to compete in this fantastic tournament setting i mean i can't wait yeah. all levels i, I just mm -hmm. we had to come up with all the stuff about building your team and okay if you two have a signature move then you get advantage on this like you get a plus two to hit or something you know all those sorts of things were, were fun to kind of build on our own as we made this mm -hmm. a huge deal an ap devoted to it i can't wait <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it does look interesting uh and maybe when we're done with our ap we can wrangle our gm to uh run this one for us as well i mean yeah <laughs> all right well then um i think that wraps it up for news so let's let's oh, uh i got one more i got one oh, more you do what <laughs> this what? is a quick we'll keep this one quick because we do have a right. lot to talk about oh, in that's our right. next I, section. I almost totally um, skipped over this one i'm super excited about this one too <laughs> Yeah, uh, for a long time now, there has been a, a quest, I think, to take some uh, major video games and kind of turn them into RPGs. Uh, one of the ones that I know we're both familiar with is D and Destiny, which mm -hmm. is turning the Destiny franchise into a D and D setup. Um, they have a Discord going. They have tons of documents at this point. I mean, that game is totally playable at this point and will feel relatively similar to D and D. But you're, you know, a space wizard fighting, you know, fire guns and stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Um, Someone did something similar, and this is what I wanted to chat about real quick, is a game called Lumen uh, by Spencer Campbell. It is available on Itch right now, and it is it is an attempt to basically take the Warframe franchise um, and turn it into an RPG. Um, I'm really excited that this is out because Spencer initially created Frame as kind of like a fan-based project, and... Uh, and when he showed it to the Warframe community, they exploded. They they were like, "You you can't what? No no, that's you can't you know take their entire IP and turn it into your game." Um, and uh, and I think there was a little bit of whoa, it's fan content. No no no, and uh, and the whole thing just collapsed. And Spencer was like, "I'm out. I'm done. I'm never gonna deal with that again." Um, and so he's come back and created Lumen, which is not connected, but still gives you these like action packed power fantasy games. Um, there's lots of like quick dice rolling. Um, combat is fast. People are supposed to feel powerful like you do in these kind of looter shooter games where you are mm -hmm. expected to destroy everything. And the, the goal is to like get cool new loot. <laughs> um, yeah. So this cool game style, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to check out Lumen. And uh, I'm a little disappointed in the Warframe community. I, I really enjoyed yeah. Warframe when I played it, but uh, I guess I'll just stick with Destiny. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> And if that sounds like something you're interested in, uh, there is, they're actually sponsoring a game jam for Lumen to come up with your own content based on the system, um, whether that's new classes and supplements or a brand new game, like, you know, off of the Lumen system. Mm -hmm. um, submissions for that game jam end on June 11th. Um, 
that's my birthday. That's why it's stuck in my mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but I'm kind of excited about that just to see what people can build out of this. Like, you know, last week, this was hugely negative and I was super sad about it. And now it's like, you know, like a phoenix it will rise. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's <great>. like <laughs> ri rising tides bring new <laughs> games tear boats apart no uh yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh dj regular has pointed out that uh there is a great article uh yes on dice breaker about this whole deal uh mm -hmm. totally worth 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 digging into that in fact i'll probably right. read that afterwards read that um, article and then look at lumen just to kind of see what came out of it it's very cool <laughs> yeah yeah well awesome that's uh that's all the news i think we both have right so it's it's time let's to uh, dig in to dig in Let's uh, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about uh, this new uh, uh, yeah, June 11th, everybody. Um, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, so let's talk about draconic options. Uh, more and more, I feel like we're getting closer and closer to a dragon book of some sort, and right. uh, and 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 here we have some what they're what they're calling the draconic races. So in this uh, guide. Uh, this is this this is clearly yes. Uh, <laughs> Alpha Stream is correct. Uh, Draco Jammer clearly <laughs> has been. You've heard it here first. Draco right, Jammer we, confirmed. We scooped it. <laughs> scooped. <laughs> I want there to be a huge like across the screen scoop. Scoop. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I'll I'll get that set up for a future scoop. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as always, this is playtest material, and uh, it's free to download on uh, Wizards. This often will show up in the D and D Beyond app as well. Right. So and, uh, yeah, all the all the opportunity is, to just play around with this. Yeah, this is monthly. I mean, if you don't know about Unearthed Arcana, these have been coming out for quite some time, and these options you'll likely see in a future book. So if you're Absolutely. not keeping track, check them out. Uh, yeah, they're up on D and D Beyond uh, less than a week after they come out on the site. Yeah, um, by my experience, at least. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and and this is something that we'll 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 probably touch on every month just because we really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, the draconic options, play test material. These are draconic races. These are uh, a few different variations on dragonborn and kobold. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, because kobold in uh, became a draconic race, I believe in the third edition, right? Because so, in second yeah. edition they were more like little dog like animals. Um, but here we are. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at our first one, which is the chromatic yeah. dragon. So this is a this is gonna be someone your this is your your more your vibrant colors, your your black, your blue, your green, your white, mm -hmm. uh those those particular uh uh dragonborn. So your your scales are gonna be like that. And you have oh, a chromatic ancestry, so you get to choose like if uh, and, and that'll help direct what kind of damage type you have. So if right. you take black you'll have acid damage type. If you take blue, it'll be lightning, green, poison, so on and so forth. Um, so the first ability, let's talk about this real quick, is the breath weapon. So you create a 30-foot line uh, that each yeah. creature must make a deck save equal to 8 plus your con modifier plus proficiency bonus or take 2d8 damage. Um, this trait can be used equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all ex uh, uses when you finish long rest. So one thing that I've really been enjoying in some of these these new races and these new character options is that your proficiency bonus is for more than just your proficiencies. I agree. So stand, standing out, standing out right for me is you can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. I think that's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah. I I really enjoy that. Um, two D eight five foot. The version that exists in the player's yeah. handbook right now. Yeah. Sorry, oh, keep going, keep going. Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say, you know, and I like that this this makes you when you take the chromatic, you get the uh, thirty foot, five foot wide line, um, and I don't think there's mm -hmm. enough line attacks in in uh, fifth edition, so it's nice to get right. another one of those in there. Right, there's no variance in it, which is interesting. There's no, you know, the the lines versus cones, although um, they're a little bit differently broken up in the player's handbook. So I, mm -hmm. I kind of like breaking them up like this. If you are yep. a chromatic dragonborn, you will have a line instead. Uh, period. A line mm -hmm. of cold. <laughs> yep. Um, and they did up the damage as well from two d six to two d eight. Um, uh, it will still go up. Uh, so the proficiency bonus is kind of the biggest deal, getting more. And like you said, that mechanic's awesome. That should yeah. that should keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, and then starting at third level, we get the chromatic warding uh, so that right. you can protect yourself from um, the energy type associated to your ancestry for 10 minutes. So you become immune to that damage type. Uh, you can't do it again until you finish a long rest. Right. There's nothing more sad than when you have a resistance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was going to say. It's yeah. it's sad when you have fire resistance and then you still drop to fire damage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all of my kids, whenever they play Dragonborn, they feel like they are immune to it because it's I don't know, it's it's easier. It makes more mm-hmm. sense to them, I think, than just half damage. So I like that you can do it, like add that option yeah. on here. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah. For me, it's just it seems powerful, but then it's so situational. So I think, right. you know, uh, I, I think it's a good power. I I could see them adjusting this from 10 minutes to one minute. Um, I think one minute oh, would sure. be would be would be a better ten minutes. Ten minutes means you're potentially diving through lava, but maybe there's no other way to dive through the lava. So you 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 kind of build your adventure around this particular ability. Like if you have this dragon board, so I've talked myself into it. I like it. Right, it's not bad. I think. <laughs> um, and there there we get our chromatic dragons. Right, the traditionally the evil of the dragons. Um, mm-hmm. And. Uh, and then we move on to the metallic ones. And I'm kind of interested in how these differentiate themselves from the chromatic versions. Yeah. So uh, let's, yeah, let's dig into that. So we have brass, bronze, copper, gold, and silver mm-hmm. chromatic dragons, right? Uh, so where the changes begin to kick in is going to be the breath weapons. So right. each one is a 15 foot cone. The same DC, same damage increases. Um, you have damage resistance, whereas, oh yeah, you do have damage resistance in the other one as well. I just missed it. Um, yeah, so, you know, similar, but instead now you have the cone. Right, close range, but more targets nearby. Mm-hmm. Sure, that's good. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, at third level, instead of gaining immunity, you gain a second breath weapon. So uh, when you take the attack action, you can replace one of your attacks with an exhalation of magical gas in a 15 foot cone that uh, same same uh, spell a DC or save DC. Uh, but then each creature in the aura must take a strength saving throw or be pushed 20 feet and knocked prone or right. each creature in the area must succeed on a con save or become incapacitated until the end of your next turn. Um, I think I think both of those options are pretty great. I agree. Yeah. And I like that it does reflect, um, you know, how dragons work in, in fifth edition at the very least, right? I believe that uh, the chromatic dragons do more damage over metallic ones have other options that they can do. So I like that they call that out here. Yeah. Um, I love, I think it's a brass dragons can put people to sleep. So I like the incapacitation here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the last option, of course, is the of the dragonborn is the gem dragon. So let's go ahead and talk about the, the different seeds. So this is, is amethyst, crystal, emerald, sapphire, and topaz. Interesting that they're bringing up gem dragons. We can talk about that later. Uh, So this one is, yeah. uh, Once again, it's a 15 foot cone, dexterity saving throw, con, same, same, same deal. Um, uh, Let's see, was the other one dexterity saving throw? Oh, I think they all are. Yeah, I think so. No, uh, uh, sorry, I meant the 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 special one. Uh, from the this special breath weapon. It's DC. Oh no, it oh. says it must succeed strength or con. That's what I was getting confused on. So gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, so so yeah, so that's uh damage based on the once again, the kind of of gem dragon you are. Uh you have resistance <laughs> that type, which means you do there's a way to get resistance to force and psychic uh now. And then, of course, there's cool. the psionic mind, which I, I like that this one's different, a little bit different too, right? You can uh, communicate with people within 30 feet of you. I think this is good. You must be able to understand languages. And then at third level, level, you get flight. And this is why I think the other one that was from 10 minutes will probably get dropped down to one minute because this is a, uh, you know, you, 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 you summon gems that turn into wings or something and yeah, yeah. you fly for a minute. I think it's good. I agree. But a minute, I think that's right? good. Yeah. Right, so maybe not ten. Um, so uh, let's see. You, maybe you can correct me. What what I recall from Gem Dragonborn or Gem mm-hmm. Dragons is that they came up during the Psionic era, right? Uh, I feel like Chromatic mm-hmm. Dragons were generally more wizardly, um, Metallic Dragons more cleric, well, Paladin, you know, somewhere in there, and Gem Dragons arose in the Psionic. That's that's kind of times. how I remember it as well. Okay. 
And I thought they spit lozenges that <laughs> exploded out in clouds. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Um, that's, I that's mean, what I remember about the right. weapon, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sad that's not in here. Um, I do really like the way they've got these set up. Uh, just by in a mechanical sense, I love mm -hmm. that this is no longer an action to use your breath weapon. It's just now part of an attack action. It takes an attack. If you are the mm -hmm. barbarian and you rush in and you cleave something and then you want to blast everyone, you can do that now. And uh, yeah. I love that as an option. That's a good change. That is that is solid. Yeah. So so far, I think I like the Dragonborn changes. I'm I'm yeah. into it. I hope a lot of the races and species and ancestries get a revamp. Uh, one of them I that I always <laughs> thought needed a revamp is the Kobold. Yeah. Right. Um, kobolds. Uh, super interesting. I I do love like getting into the draconic ideas of kobolds, like these little creatures that are just waiting for their inner dragon to like burst out and then they'll mm -hmm. start flying. Um, yeah. I always try and dig into that as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So kobolds, uh, they get dark vision, so they can see 60 feet. They get draconic, and you notice that they don't have the weakness anymore. Uh, right. They draconic legacy, so uh, you have advantage on saving throws to avoid or into frightened condition. Perfect for a kobold, right? Uh, you yeah. know one cantrip of your choice from the sorcerer spell list, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, is that uh, a casting ability? Fantastic. You make an unarmed strike with your tail, uh, and you, if you hit with it, it uh, deals 1d6 plus strength modifier, bludgeoning damage. Um, and I think that's great, too. I, I, I like that. That's that's not one I would have considered normally, is is thinking about a tail attack. But I love right. I love natural weapons. I, I, love, I love tail attacks. <laughs> Whereas you know me, I don't. So the option to not take that is great for me. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, like, so if I were going to choose one, I would probably... I probably wouldn't choose that. I would actually, yeah, it depends on the build, right? Maybe it I does. would choose it. If I was a monk, that'd be sweet. I mean, that's fair. Um, I, yeah, because you can't finesse it. It's a strength only. Um, yeah. This would be tough. I mean, depending on the character, uh, just not being frightened would be awesome if I was playing mm -hmm. some kind of big melee build. Uh, but I do love a good cantrip, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were discussing cantrips uh, as we were getting warmed up. What cantrip would you go for? Too many uh, good ones. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so this is the, the interesting one: is draconic roar. So, as a bonus action, you let out your draconic war roar, and enemies within ten feet uh, it, it targets enemies within ten feet of you. And until your mm -hmm. end of your next turn, your allies have advantage on attack rolls against any of those enemies who could hear the roar. Um, I I like this, right. but I don't know that I would call it a roar. That doesn't seem to fit. Like I, I, I would like draconic distraction or something like that, right? Where right. Right. You, you, you do something, and it could be anything. Like it could be your blood curdling scream. It could be a uh, the your your draconic poetry because you uh -huh. know, <laughs> their, their their poetry is much like Data's poetry. It's mm -hmm. it's accurate, and right. um, you know you could do something like that, and I think it would be better to be a distraction. Uh, but the roar itself is, it, I think it fits for people on the trail to dragons. But face it, your kobold is never going to be a dragon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is really interesting. I feel like this is a version of pack tactics, but for players, which I think is cool. Yeah. But, you know, when I look at like the Leonin and their daunting roar, like, you know, the massive, powerful creatures and their roar makes someone terrified or frightened, um, mm -hmm. which I like thematically as a roar, uh, a roar that like skits your party active and involved in fighting and gives them all advantage mm -hmm. um yeah i'd, I'd retheme that myself i think but I, yeah. I do like this this idea of kobold poetry um yeah because it feels <laughs> it's totally a support option it's a great support option <laughs> yeah all right yeah. uh and cool. then on this in this guide you know they don't do this very often but uh there are a few extra feats there is a gift of the chromatic dragon. So as a bonus action, uh, mm. you can imbue uh, a, a weapon with uh, acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison. Uh, and then whenever you take that kind of damage, you can use your reaction to give yourself resistance to that instance of the damage. Pretty mm -hmm. sweet. I think that's yeah. pretty imbalanced. And then to kind of like line up with what you were saying before, gift of the metallic dragon, you learn the cure wound spell. And you cast that spell without expending a spell slot. Uh, once you cast it this way, you can't do it until you finish a long rest. So you know that kind of that kind of leans into that. And you can also manifest wings uh, that can shield you and others from attacks. So that's very that's very in line with the paladin right. and that type of stuff. Protective wings is such a cool idea. So I'm very right. happy to see that option here. 
Yeah. And then uh, we're not going to get into spells. The spells are going to be a little too nitty gritty, but let's talk about Gift of Gem Dragon real quick. This one, you increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma by one. I like the feats that have a uh, a stat boost. And then yep. on top of that, you uh, when you take damage from a creature that is within 10 feet of you, you can use uh, your telekinetic energy uh, to... Um, uh, uh, deal damage back, so it's like a, a psychic protection, and you push people yeah. away. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a ton cool of fun. One. Um, yeah, and we aren't going to look at the spells, but I'm interested in how many of them have dragons' names in the beginning. I mean, there's going to yep. be some named dragons in this book that is certainly coming out. <laughs> yep. I mean, come on, look at this. Yeah, um, I'm so excited. Draco Jammer. It. Yeah, I'm super excited uh, for Draco Jammer. Yeah, uh, and speaking of of epic dragons. Uh, there, there, there is no setting more epic, filled with dragons, <laughs> than Draco Jammer. But beyond yes. that, I believe it's time to head over to our first guest. Are you ready, Rich? I am ready. Uh, although, real quick, just if you are playing the Unearthed Arcana and talk about the options, you can drop into the Saving Through Discord, into the Owl Bear Soup channel, and tell us all about it because I want to know how these draconic options go for you. <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. With and without that. further ado. <laughs> Gasp! There it is. Uh, I am joined here on Albert Soup by uh, by the Grandmaster of the Thunderdome, uh, the one and only Keith Baker. <laughs> Keith, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> oh, you're still muted. <laughs> Technology. I, uh... <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Wow. Um, when uh, let's see. I was just gonna like dive into uh, well, but you you to, added technology I, to to uh, to D and D, so <laughs> it's true. I do have to just jump in on the cobalt for just a moment to say sure. part of it is is I completely agree with your point. I think the ability is good for cobalts, but I didn't actually even read it closely, and I didn't even realize that the roar was a granting advantage tactic-y thing. I just assumed it was frightening people because that's oh, what yeah. roar sounds like. Right. Yeah. So I've got to agree with you. I think the ability is great. I love like, oh, we're coordinating, we're working together, we're a team, but I would not call that a roar. Right. So. I think the, the goblins have a similar ability, right? Or is it the old kobold who could like cower? Uh, and, and oh, like the wall could cower. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't want to get buried in that. I just want to, to oh, of course, throw of that course. on because you drew my attention to it. Yeah. Well, I am so excited to have you here because, uh, you know, you have been, uh, first of all, one of my favorite authors for quite a while. Uh, oh, well, shucks. Creating, Thanks. Creating Eberron in, uh, uh, when did it go up? 90? Oh, no, no, what no. Year? Was it 2000? 2004. 2003, really? 2004. Yeah. Oh my gosh, as soon as it came out, we, our third ed, ed, third ed campaign swapped. So it feels like a big part of my uh, <laughs> play history. <Well>. So <laughs> excellent. Um, yeah. And uh, and you would, of course, have never stopped uh, the Eberron train. It continues to run. <laughs> well, it's a lightning rail. It's magic. Right. It never runs yeah. out. Can't stop, um, which is great. Um, you, uh, let's see, recently put out on the DMs Guild uh, Exploring Eberron, which is still the best seller on the site <laughs> it, it gets knocked off for a couple days now and then uh -huh. but then it then it usually creeps back up there so which is yeah. is crazy to me like i'm very glad people are buying it and enjoying it but i mean it's been like eight months or something now yeah so it's a pretty amazing run i mean i just think it's a it's an excellent indicator that eberron is one of those campaign settings that the people want you know <laughs> so. i want it very cool. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> and of course, I'm I'm working on my next book, Frontiers of right. Eberron, which mm -hmm. you're effectively playtesting right now. That's true. That is true, and it is fun. <laughs> I don't know how much you want to talk about it. Um, I would love to, of course. Oh, I, I, uh, I'm happy dive to in. talk about it. I mean, yeah. basically, what I'm doing right now is this all started towards the end of last year, uh, where I was actually just talking with uh, Wayne Chang, who's the producer for KB Presents, the, the little group that we made exploring Ebron, and we're doing other things, and we're sort of, what do we do next? Uh, and we started working on a little adventure set on, you know, what we call the frontier. Basically, over the last couple of years, I've run a number of campaigns out in Kabara on the east side of Eberron with this sort of, you're out on a little mining town in the end of nowhere with a little bit of a sort of Western flavor. 
And basically in coming up with this idea, we said, well, people like that. You know, what if we took that and we switched it over? So it's actually in the West, in the frontier between Brayland and Droam. Droam is one of my favorite places in Eberron. It's the nation of monsters. Um, and it is this sort of open frontier. Braylon doesn't actually accept Droam as a nation. So you don't right. really have this firm border. Um, and basically, as I said, we started doing it as an adventure. And I just basically said, I love this area so much that I love to just do it as a sort of mini setting within the setting. That this is just... Right uh sort of like like basically a campaign guide for running these little sort of western flavored uh, adventures in eberron and so the book coming out is called frontiers of eberron and it's essentially this sort of region uh that is the the western edge of brayland the eastern edge of droam and you've got a little bit of the eldine reaches on the top and it's just fun because it is an area where sort of no one really has a strong claim where basically you're interacting with all the traditional sort of monsters as your neighbors instead of necessarily as your enemies, where the dragon marked houses are moving in. And one of the things is that people have sort of brought up the fact, and I agree, that Kabara has a little more sort of classic colonialism. It is human settlers coming in and sort of taking taking the land essentially. Right. Uh, whereas in the, the Braylon Droam, it's completely different. It is Droam is this active growing power. Like it's not humans coming into land that they think is undiscovered. It's, it's about the balance of power between this sort of growing nation of monsters mm -hmm. and between this old sort of foggy nation, you know, a Braylon that, <laughs> that isn't taking the yeah. monster seriously, as seriously as it should be. Um, wow. So in part, trying that out, you know, to explore that, I also started running a campaign on my Patreon. So I have a Patreon, Keith Baker, uh, that supports the articles I write on my website. And to do something sort of a little unique for the patrons, uh, if you back at what's called the threshold level, uh, I try to every month run an adventure set in Threshold, which is this little Braylish city on the very edge of Droam. Mm -hmm. And um, I basically go through a little, I can't randomly select people because the rules right. are Patreon, but I can do little contests. So I do kind of last one was like, tell me your character's favorite beverage. You know, the ones before that, <laughs> most of them are, we have this cast of 10 characters and most of them were like, describe a connection between two of these characters and you end up Ooh. playing one of them. But basically the characters are consistent. The story evolves, but the players change out each time. So anybody mm -hmm. could, have a chance to play and so meanwhile fun. i then also am running an iteration of that same campaign at home here with you and a number of other uh -huh. friends in part <laughs> sort of for me to try out things before i yeah. bring them on the patrons and so i've been having a lot of fun with that i i really like the idea of having this core set of characters in this town because i know when whenever i read a campaign setting it's always like so much good information and now where what do i how do I start? Like, where's my starting point? Yeah. And I love how, you know, fleshed out threshold is now as this, this staging ground, right? You can yeah. start your story here. Here's the people around. Here are these 10, you know, major characters, the ones that are being played in your Patreon game. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and they're, you know, sprinkled throughout the guide. They're in multiple yeah. places. You can really see the connections that you're building in this world. And, uh, it would make it so easy to drop in as a DM, um, you know, and get ready and be like, here's the place we're going to start. Uh, you can read this chapter to find out so much information and have these characters like immerse yourself as much as you want to, um, which is just, it's so good. It's kind of like how I would like to approach starting a campaign. I can just never find that book. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, uh, it's fun for me because we basically, I wanted to find a way for all my patrons to feel involved, even if they don't end up, because I have a couple hundred patrons, you know, they're not all going to end up uh, being able to be at, uh, in a session. Uh, but basically those 10 characters, we actually went through a process over a course of months of, of basically a series of polls that helped sort of define uh, the basic ideas. Like I started saying, okay, we're going to have the muscle and we yeah. could have the sheriff. We could have the blacksmith. We could have the marshal or we could have the bounty hunter. Mm 
pick two of those and you know describe them in a little more than that and then once they pick two i'm like okay we've got the the smith and the the marshal now let's talk about the smith is she she's a shifter is she a barbarian is she a fighter you know is she a battle master fighter you know sort of went through these processes so we have these 10 characters at the end of the day that basically you know all the people who have, have been in the patron like no like, you know, again, even if you you do or don't play them, we've sort of built them together. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of process. Essentially, it's trying to do a session zero of right. this is what I would do in a session zero. Uh, and what I did with my Kabara campaigns uh, was to sit down with the players and and basically say, like, tell me something about this town tell me something uh you know you've seen it in in mm -hmm. frontiers of eberron the the book i'm working on part of the point is i do have a chapter that is a deeper dive on threshold and one of the things i'm doing is it talks about all the businesses but i've also thrown in every sort of business or major character has a list of like possible connections like right. how could you have a connection to the general store how could you have a connection uh to the tavern and and I like that sort of idea of, you know, as a player, I could just flip through and say, ooh, I like that one. That's 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 me. You know, like it's sort right. of an extension of background and mm -hmm. saying, let's not just think about my general background as a soldier, but let's think of I want to be specifically connected in a meaningful way to two or three things in this town. Yeah, which is very uh, empowering as a player as well. You've got those those connections to kind of work off and build on with your characters, which I love. And and, and this is the point of you don't have to play the campaign this way. Like this campaign book, the whole idea of it is you can just use it as we're going to pass through this region. And here's a bunch of interesting places to stop mm -hmm. in on the way. You don't yeah. have to play a campaign here. Uh, but if you do, part of what I like about it, as I did with my Kabara, is I like having a campaign, especially when you're starting at low level, where you actually have an investment in a place, Right, Where, and this is right. the idea of Threshold. This Threshold is a small town that is growing right on the edge of Droam and Braylon, which is to say in a very precarious position. The dragon marked houses are taking a bigger interest. Things are changing. Mm -hmm. There could be cults hidden in town. Uh, and that the idea is I want that from adventure to venture. You may be going off right. and investigating weird stuff under the mountains. You may be going off and fighting bandits in the north, but you're coming back to Threshold. And and I like that feeling like you have a connection to or investment in the town. Absolutely. And, just and it, it can grow and change. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, I'm really excited for that book to to come out. Um, and so that everybody can start playing the setting, this cool, like, it feels frontier, which I like in in the ways that I want it to feel like a frontier, you know, and, and you like guys you not colonial, got, but yeah. <laughs> yeah go ahead you almost got half the town blown up uh, last time too we did so we did yeah it, except it i cast true. a spell everybody <laughs> it, it is true that uh it, we're using frontier here more in the sense actually of border than in right, yes some of the more colonial aspects of frontier mm -hmm. which i like a lot so, um well, one of the things I wanted to ask you about specifically is as we've been playing, I mean, you, we, we've played a couple different games in the past. You do a thing very often, which I love, and it's, it creates this collaborative world building experience at the gaming mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. um, in this last one, uh, there, there was a moment, I think right when that battle started, we were in a, you know, in the bar in, um, in the crown. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was all right, everyone, you know, there, there's, or in the festival, everyone described one of the, festival in the, square, one of the yeah. people. That's right. Um, who is serving something here at the at the festival, the sand fruit festival? Yeah, the um, sand fruit festival. You know what? What's their what's their specialty? What do they make? Who are they? You know, and and suddenly from nothing, from the events that there is a festival going on, now there's like five characters. Um, how how do you decide? I mean, how do you implement that? How can how can people watching right now like do you have recommendations for how you do that? I mean, it seems so natural for you, but it's hard to do. <laughs> well, I'll say just an interesting point is this is something we also specifically do in Phoenix Dawn Command. Um, and role playing game is we we call out that sort of thing, and it's it's essentially the point of offering the players a chance to invest in cosmetic details that usually aren't game changing, but right. they're I am asking you for hooks. I am saying, tell me something interesting. So one of the simplest uh, sort of manifestations of this that, that I'd like to call out is when I have people being attacked by a mob of zombies, 
uh, like there's what are called the Chanters in Phoenix, I will immediately mm -hmm. say, okay, everybody, these are villagers. Like this is a village on the edge of the frontier before they were zombies. Tell me about one of the zombies who catches your eye. And the and I'll, I'll say a yep. couple. I'll say like there's a guy <laughs> who's clearly a bard who's got like a smashed boot over his shoulder. There's a butcher who's missing one of his arms, but is still carrying a butcher cleaver. Now you tell me about someone. So I'm helping them like I'm giving the idea. Mm -hmm. But then the point is what I want to know is like when you think of a mob of zombies, do you think of like, you know, the child dragging the bloody teddy bear? Do you drink of think of the, you know, the old, you know, what is it that grabs you? Because as soon as you think about that, it's no longer just a random monster or a random bunch of numbers. It's now mm -hmm. you see that scene. It's our story. Right. And and it doesn't change anything, no. but it also means now if you say the child with the bloody teddy bear, then as I'm describing it, when I say the zombie grabs you and hits you for three points of damage, I get to say, oh, that child hisses and moves faster than you would have thought <laughs> and she beats you with a teddy bear. Uh -huh. And and again, it's it's something I would have never thought of, but now it's our story and it matters. Right. Likewise, Absolutely. In that sort of bar scenario, and I'll shut up because I know you don't have a lot of time, uh, but in that bar scenario, that is the point of whether it's in the bar and there's a patron, whether it's at the festival and tell me about the people who were in charge. Once you start talking about them, you are invested in them and they suddenly become people I can use and, and essentially add tension mm -hmm. in ways. Right. Uh, I had a game I ran a while ago where there was just this uh, homeless guy named Newsy. They were in a bad part of Sharn. And I just said, everybody knows Newsy. He he tells, he has old <laughs> newspapers that he's always uh -huh. shouting the news as if it's new news, even though it's really not. Tell me about a story, you know, an interaction you've had with him. And people are like, oh, I sleep with him in the homeless shelter because my character's a homeless wizard. Or, you know, oh, mm -hmm. I'm a barbarian. I don't realize the stories are old and I'm fascinated. You know, everyone gives a story. <laughs> and then when Newsy gets captured by the cult and is is like in danger of stuff, people care. Right. Um, and so that's all I'm saying is it's it ultimately comes down to a sort of show don't tell type of thing. What this is saying is ask don't tell. It's saying where there is a possibility, give players the chance to add some details, and then you don't have to use them all. You know, it's right. not like this is an obligation. If you say uh, there's a character who's a stegosaurus and something or other, I can just be like, yeah, he is. He's over there. He doesn't do uh -huh. anything in the rest of the adventure. Right. But it is that chance for you to uh, throw things out that I might be like, perfect. Oh, I can totally use, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the wise old sand fruit wizard. <laughs> exactly. You know, in some way. Yeah, and you get to do it in in the moments as a DM. You are calling for the information when you kind of want it, so you can adapt it a little right. bit easier, rather than like a huge backstory or like a you know fifty question questionnaire before and, the campaign starts. It's kind of it's very active. And, and the last thing I'll say is also just throwing that out is another place I really like using it in Phoenix uh, is when you're trying to set a scene as uh, something scary, and basically I'm going to say we're going into the uh, abandoned temple. There mm -hmm. is a, a layer of slime on the floor. You hear things dripping. The statue is cracked. But tell me something that you find really creepy. And part of the point is because yeah. I don't know what you find really creepy. I can't sort of do that. Right. But you do know what you find creepy. And, you know, you throw out the detail. I'll see what I can do with that and go with it. But at the very least, I've now got you thinking about what is a scary temple. What right. would I right. find? Uh, creepy about it and so i love as i said i'm always looking for opportunities to to draw the players in in those small ways fantastic well i know you have to get going uh this this advice has been fantastic i really hope people are, are able to kind of add these collaborations to their their adventures because they've been a great experience for me and i think it's kind of helped me in my not just like playing dming writing all sorts of the ways um so thanks for that <laughs> uh, you're welcome um, thanks for yeah that. Yeah. Um, thanks for having and me on see. and thanks for playing oh, in course. my game. Um, how soon is Frag coming out? Because we want to have you back so that you can also come back and do our part two or collaborative adventure building um, uh, in is, the future. It is, it is hard to say because uh, it is one of these things like just the other day I realized something that's probably going to add another 10,000 words you know, sure, to the book. Sure. Uh, I'm hoping end of July, um, okay. which is when Great. Exploring Eberron came out last year, end of July, early August. But I can certainly pop in before then and, you know, let you know how it's going or if I've killed Fantastic. all your characters in our game. 
Oh, we'll definitely talk about that if that happens. It's it's almost happened a few times. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it's been great having you. Um, everybody can uh, can track you down, of course, at uh, keith-baker.net uh, and on Twitter at Hellcow Keith. Uh, Keith-Baker.com, but yes. .com, I'm sorry. Oof. And uh, or togetherstudios.com <laughs> is actually, we're going to be shifting over. That's probably the best place. So oh, togetherstudios.com or Hellcow Keith. So yeah. bye, everyone. Great. Have a great day. <laughs>
it's pretty awful. No, no. <laughs> it, it really depends like on the show because at um, at PAX, let's say you volunteer for PAX, yeah. the, 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 the skill sets and the capabilities where you might fit in could be anything from doing, um, helping out with stage uh, stuff, helping um, like even like loading out instruments and, and uh, putting down gaff tape or picking up gaff tape off of stage to uh, something my father likes to do is just to be there as uh, one of the people at the front of the stage during, you know, uh, the musical performances. Mm -hmm. I think I lost your audio there, Dickie. Uh oh, I think we lost Dickie. We'll be uh, he'll be reconnecting here shortly, hopefully. In the meantime, uh, oh yeah, okay, we got one moment. I can talk a little bit about um my experience at cons while Dickie's reconnecting, um, and uh, oh, there we go. You oh, are back. Really weird. Like your audio cut out, my audio cut out. Anyway, so I was saying that that the the skill set. So, if you have a skill set that is like networking, um, computer support, then you might be helping out really behind, way back behind the scenes, making sure everybody's having a great network experience. If your experience is uh, things like people uh, interactions, then you might end up doing like the line entertainment. That's a job that that, that they uh, people do. Uh, anything that you can think of where there might be a small little gap that that you you might be able to fill that piece. You almost almost anyone could be a volunteer and do it well. Uh, yeah. So you know, uh, when I volunteered, I volunteered in the uh, area where we are chatting with the you know we're 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 paying attention to the special guests. So my experience was hanging out with the special guests, uh, making sure they have food and water, managing lines. Um, and 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 that's just because of my background. And where do you typically typically end up? You you've been talking a little bit about stage, and I mean I know where you end up, but <laughs> well, what when I first started with PAX, I was doing the uh, board game, the, the the you know helping people check out board games and and the the free play board game area. That was back in the mid. Then it. Uh, I remember somebody walking into the green room while we were on a little break and asking who can read music. And then that brought me to the stage. And then from the stage, the, just continued to be an ongoing thing because I, I've got a background in, in audio and visual stuff that I you know, do for um, uh, various folks. And, and, and so my interaction is typically backstage uh, helping navigate those waters, making sure that people are taken care of in the same way that you're doing with the VIP folks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, except I'm just there, you know, making sure that that things run smoothly. It's a completely different perspective um, because you see the multi. Like I'm looking right right now, I get to see the multi screen. I get to see I see Rich over there in the corner. Mm -hmm. He's not on the screen that everybody else sees. Yeah, hello. Uh, and, <laughs> and so it's 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 very a very interesting uh, piece. That said, at a con, I would be willing to work any position if that meant that I had to carry a broom around and sweep up um, random pamphlets that were on the ground. I would do that because that would be me helping the con be successful taking a stress level off of some other individual. And then that gives me when there's a break time, then I'm going to interact with other people. I'm still have the opportunity to kind of point them in the right people or in the right direction, that sort of thing. So that's, that's kind of where I typically end up. Um, but that's because of the background. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So I, yeah, I have, I have two, two, two more questions. One, two more questions. one, what, what do you think is something that, you know, a, a benefit to volunteering that volunteers don't normally think of, right? The first thing you think of, of course, is like a free pass, uh, you know, sure. or or getting in a little bit early, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's you know, I, I I've done that at Emerald City Comic Con at different different places. I was able to get in early, check out the floor because it fills up so quickly, um, and they're like volunteers. You guys get first pass today. Go check things out before your your shift. Um, okay. 
so, so you know, those those are kind of the obvious benefits. What's what's something that stands out uh, to you as a less obvious, more interesting, maybe benefit? I I think that the probably the most interesting benefit is um, not something that would be uh, uh, physical that you could actually touch. It, it's more about that at the end of the show when everything is done and you see the smiles on people's faces as they're leaving and they're gathered up their stuff and they may look exhausted, but they had a great time and you were part of that piece. It, it's very uh, fulfilling mm -hmm. um, and, and you really want to participate. The, the second benefit probably is that um, you might end up making friends with people that you didn't expect. Uh, like I mean, you and I are friends because of Pax. The yeah. um, Alpha Stream, who's who's in the chat right now, I wouldn't have met Teos if it wasn't for Pax. And and those those friendships have have then contributed to things that I wouldn't have expected. The last one I'll add, and I'll just like as a as a half one, you might learn a skill or be inspired to do something. I have been a board game designer since I was a little kid but was never really inspired to think that I could actually make something that would be a, a, a game. Mm -hmm. Now I have several that are kind of in the works and one that's hopefully going to be published in, in the next year or so, because I came away from the first packs going, wow, those were some really neat board games. I'm going to come up with something that I can actually produce yeah, and, and make that happen. So that's probably the last one that you The skills you gain are pretty incredible. I, I, and, and I'll be honest, like I've, both put my volunteer experience on resumes as well as seen resumes and hired people based on you know oh, volunteer awesome. experience yes because because i know what it's like being a volunteer yeah. being back there how much work it is and how dedicated you have to be you know that's something like if if your 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 employer realizes what's all involved with that that they'll see that and they'll go okay well this is this is some dedication so, yeah yeah that, if you're the type of person that would walk down the street and saw a piece of trash and you would pick it up and put it in the trash can rather than walk by it, mm -hmm. then you probably should be volunteering for cause. <laughs> All right. And then my last question for you uh, is, is if people are interested in volunteering, um, how, how best do you think it would be for them to go about finding volunteer opportunities? That's, that's super interesting. I know for PACs, typically what happens is that we as the enforcers are told like, Hey, we're looking for more people. And then we reach out to others and, and that's, typically the, the best way. I would say the other way is that if you're at a con, at a situation, you you, you see the opportunity to help some someone mm -hmm. do that and watch what happens when people start recognizing that you're doing that sort of thing. You yeah. you That's kind of what happened at, that, at Minecon. I was helping people like, here, let me take care of this thing. Let me move this box. That, and the next thing you know, hey, do you want to like help do this? Um, and you can usually find if they're looking for volunteers on on people's Twitter pages. I've done some um, virtual cons, like showing demoing board games for companies uh, by just following them on Twitter. Um, that would be another way that you know the social media aspect of being discords and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, awesome. Well, Dicky, yeah. thank you so much for talking to us yeah. about cons. Uh, make sure to go check out his fantastic photography at DickyAdams.com. Follow him on Twitter at Dicky Adams. And uh, is there anywhere else uh, folks can uh, hunt you down? Not yet, not yet. Someday right. soon. Someday right, soon. Perfect. Those games up. Well, I, I'm looking forward to being able to throw the scoop logo on the screen when we get the scoop. Go, boom! Fine, Dickie Adams here. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. Are you going to stick around for the uh, the building, yeah. or are you going to run off? Okay, cool. No, I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit. I'm I'm good. I got. All right. I got Perfect. Then in that case, let's let's jump over to our next portion of the show, uh, which should be all three of us. Here we are. Yes. All right. So. Uh, we have moved to the section of the show in which we write an adventure with the help of our audience. Uh, and that is you, audience. So, audience, are you guys ready? Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. I, I've got so I've got, oh, my gosh, I've got a pitch. This you came. This came to me. We we often write uh, quite a bit of, you know, uh, D and D magic and mayhem. Um, I am suddenly stuck with the idea that I I kind of want a convention adventure. <laughs> um, since okay. since we have a professional, you know, uh, we could use like using a convention as a starting point or whatever. I mean, we get to. Um, 
I mean, incredible TV episodes for sure. I'm trying to remember my favorites. It was Buffy episode. <laughs> oh, I think uh, but, uh, well, uh, there was a... Or, there's a Dresden, like SplatterCon. I mean, cons are just yeah. this cool place where chaos can happen, magic can happen, and we can move on from there. <laughs> All right. So our setting, friends, is a con. Oh. Convention. That is our setting for this adventure. So, uh, yeah. All right. So our setting is a con. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I like I like starting people at Chef Alberti. Where is Chef oh, sure. Alberti uh, sending folks today? They're sending Let's... them to a con. Why are they going to this con? Um. Ooh, ooh, right. Uh, it's got to be an event. You know, conventions full of events, panels, fun things, uh, or a demo, maybe. Maybe there is something that Chef Albert D needs people to go and research. Go here, judge this, learn for yourself, and, you know, bring it back to me. Oh, cosplay should be in there somewhere. Darn right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be cosplay. I got to tell you, I love it whenever the cosplay. players have to design a costume or an outfit for themselves as part of the game. I think that's a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the players... Players have to uh, design their cosplay. Are I having odd technical issues, uh, Dicky? Yeah, it's like my audio cut out, but I'm back. I'm still okay. Great. Oh, no. I'm not <laughs> watching like this is at once. We're good. All right, cool. Uh, so players don't have to. No, they don't have to. They get to design okay. their cosplay outfits. I made us some space if you want to scroll. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, so here we go. We're Chef Alberti is sending the adventures, uh, sending adventures from the Exploration Society to a con. Um, and while they're uh, they they they've gone to this con, and they're gonna have to infiltrate the con and go cosplaying uh, something. So, we, what is this con for? What kind of con are we sending these adventures to? Is this fantasy? Is this sci-fi? Is this, are we steampunk again? Are we cyberpunk? Where are we going? Ooh. Ooh. Should, it, should it be like a, um, like a, a cooking expo? Oh, you know, cooking expo. Lots of, lots of pots and pans yeah. and technology and, and, oh, check out this. Like, like, here's this, uh, I'm going to steal this from Keith because he, here's the, bre the breakdown uh, spatula. You know, Spatula City does carry this. But it's limited edition. <laughs> it all fits in a tiny little case, and you put it together, and it makes a a uh, wand of flipping. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Oh, oh man, uh, let's see. Uh, there's this. I love that. Also, uh, Adventures Pack in the chat has mentioned uh, part of the uh, map uh, should be uh, the empty halls. That is a real. <laughs> That is and, really yeah, and and uh, what uh, you know the back the back uh, the behind the stage hallways, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, the sign would say you don't belong here. Do not go past this sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, anyway, I've I've spent a lot of time in those hallways. Yeah. <laughs> Both when I when I was supposed to be there and when I wasn't supposed to be there, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, you know what you need. You know what you need. Oh, you, you there has to be a clipboard. Oh, yep. Uh, a clipboard somewhere and a um, either like a safety vest or something that makes you look more official, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. Wristband. Maybe maybe it's, maybe they can come up with something that that looks like a wristband to get behind that area, right? Oh, that's very good. That's like a great initial goal, right? right. And then once they've got it, boom! Now we're in those back hallways. Get access yeah. to the show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the convention <All> right. catacombs. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Alberti wasn't invited this year. Oh dear! To mm. the uh, you know uh, food and tool con, uh, you know. Oh no, the kitchen con. Kitchen con. <laughs> oh, I have this idea. Oh, cutlery con. Cutlery con. <laughs> cutlery con. I like that. Uh, oh wait, he had he couldn't go. He wasn't invited to kitchen con because he was a speaker. A speaker at Cutlery Con. 
Oh, and they're the same weekend. Is that what you're saying, or is it like a rivalry? <laughs> it's, a, it's a rivalry. Okay. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, chef, chef needs you, the PCs, to infiltrate the con. <laughs> okay. And steal back his favorite uh, ladle. Mm. Mm. Oh, right. <laughs> right. I, gosh, I love this because in my head I'm getting this like fantasy version of the the world's fair, but it's it's all for kitchen, right? But there's that sense of like wonder and new technology around every corner, yeah. um, and, uh, and and also and somebody like, else is using it, right? That spatula, that that's that that spatula, the the um, ladle, mm -hmm. the spatula or ladle. Uh, somebody else is using it, not knowing it was his, right? They oh they, yeah, they just pulled it out of a drawer. Or somebody brought it to them, and they've just been using it. But it's got to be somebody big and nasty. Like that's the right. They don't mean to be big and nasty, but when you go in there, you know, like you go into a kitchen and you're not supposed to be there, and they're like, out, out, out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, uh, is it is it Alton Brown? Is oh, oh my god. Is... <laughs> <laughs> well, what what would be the alternative? No, no, no. It's not Alton Brown. It's um, Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, right. We've, so it's, it's, it's hell's kitchen, right? Yeah. So there we go. Uh, How is uh, it? Rando Gamzee. Rand there you go. Thank you. <laughs> and, and we need somebody in the chat to come up with a better name than hell's kitchen because that would be, get us into terrible, right. terrible right. legal trouble. Right. Uh, uh, from the hit show, traveling show. <laughs> uh, sticks. Uh, uh, stick sticks. They they make um uh jerky bits. Oh, it sticks bits. Perfect. <laughs> and they make jerky and a stew because stew. they need a ladle. Right. ladle. <laughs> Ooh, I just I just took the time to go back to our Axbeak egg adventure where uh -huh. we actually introduced Chef Rorsden Gamsby. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boris and Gamzee is back. What a villain! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We didn't take care of him there. So no. I like. Oh, I like Hex Cu uh, Cucina. Cucina? That's yeah, I like good. that one. I, got. I, I think I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. go with that. That's yeah. that's <laughs> even that's that's funny. I like that. <laughs> oh <right>. my gosh! <laughs> uh, all right. And so your mission is to retrieve it from Rord and Gamzee. Right. Uh, I think Rord and Gamzee knows, right? Because because Rord and Gamzee so. and Chef Albierdi oh. are are longtime competitors Rivals. now. Oh, yeah. Fair, yeah. Fair. You're missing. Your mission is to infiltrate the con. And right, this is the one time when he won't have all his tools back. next to him, right? Because he's on stage. <laughs> right. Yep, yep. And and I would like to I would like to just throw a little like um, put this in the lore that his goons are belks. His goons are Belks. Done. B L K S. Belks. B L K S. Perfect. Tails <laughs> understand. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You oh, you should fear Rorsden's ground beef golems. Um, oh yes. Mm, oh my gosh. That's, that's just. It's a snack. It's like a like a lunchable. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let's let's go ahead and put put that in here so that we can. Uh, we can keep that in here. Uh, Fear Rorsden, ground <laughs> beef golems. Small, they but are yeah. small but many. Very good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, very nice. And I feel like that needs to be an encounter too, right? So let's let's put oh, yeah. one encounter here. Here, uh, let's. Uh, so scene one. Let's do this the way we like to do this. Scene one. Uh, for scene one, we meet with uh, chef, and chef. Uh, let's the crew know. Uh, let's the crew know that they need to design their costumes. Right. We're gonna get into the convention with some some good old cooking cosplay. Um, yeah. Allow us to sneak through while we get the devices. We'll need the wristbands. Uh, whatever is gonna get us into the the uh, hallways, the back halls. <laughs> yeah. What's your, what's your puzzle for picking the right color of ribbon to make the wristband? Mm, yeah, there. Oh, that's a good one. That you've got the right day. Right? Yeah, so you span oh. each day. So, how are you going to work that out? Yeah. Right. So, scene. Well, here, scene two. Scene two. Uh, they show up at the con, 
and now they have to figure out how to sneak in. Uh, cool time so, to do some some of those little cooking demos or or add some strange technologies. I mean, we we did our our festival, which had some similar bits, but I love it when people get to explore random strange things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 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 investigation wristbands, right? So let's. Yeah. So they're gonna they as the PCs need to figure out either how to get a wristband or if they pay for one from a scalper yeah how to get a wristband <laughs> uh how to forge a wristband yeah. mm -hmm. right will they have the correct uv technology one, right yeah, <laughs> yeah so you know and then and that opens up upper opportunities uh is 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 that that you know now they have various ways to enter the convention like they're outside are they going to go mug another chef who's going into this convention are they going to you know how are they going to interact with all the help right because i mean around the back if they go around the back there's people bringing in groceries they've got wristbands on yeah huh? they're obviously overwhelmed so here's our volunteer moment right exactly gonna, like, like that's one way you get in you could just go right up to the We'll call and say you're out in Brown and yeah, you're here for sure. Yeah. I kind of like this idea that, that you were just mentioning, like, uh, you know, public service should be rewarded. If you want to work yeah. at a convention, start start working at one. You know, yeah. here are a list of tasks that they will offer you in the morning. Oh, and, that's, you know, that's good. Yep. Do yep. some of yep. this and, and you can be in. No problem. We'll take you the yep. rest yep. of the day. <laughs> a nice little center piece, right? Exactly. If they go to the volunteer booth, the coordinator uh the person because <laughs> i don't want to try to spell that uh the 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 person uh ricky Daddams, uh will uh give them some tasks that will give them greater access to the convention and allies to help them uh, there you with go. their tasks <laughs> Oh, not convection. Convention. Well, I don't know. The lava. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, no, I, I I like I like where this is going. I'm I'm loving it so far. Uh let's see here. So uh scene three. They are in the con. Uh actually, you know what might be kind of fun? Let's go ahead and let's see. Let's do this. Let's come up with some of those volunteer tasks. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. What are some of the things that they could volunteer to do? Carry groceries. Yep. Move the move the supplies. Uh, yeah. Line line entertainment. That could be a persuasion oh, or, yeah. or, or oh wow charisma role. A bar could be like a play an instrument that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, line entertainment. Um, security. Oh yeah, security. Um, helping uh, helping the speakers yep. get to their panels. Well, see, that would be an interesting one. Maybe, maybe our 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 uh, antihero is one is the keynote. Oh, and they get assigned yeah. to that role, right? Yeah. So to get that to get that role, you'd have to do a couple other things beforehand, right? You have to demonstrate that, like, all right, you know what? You've been you like volunteered for like four out of the five available things. We really like for you to do like help us with this. You, you're you seem trustworthy. Yeah. We're going to let you like interact with this. Big disclaimer here, folks: we do not do this in real life as enforcers. We don't. We don't go and take their ladles. <laughs> approved or cons at all? No, no. <laughs> oh man! Oh, wow. You know what? Here's I was. I was thing, just. Is I want to kind of go oh, yeah. back on this. I don't like. I kind of want to get rid of all this investigation, and I want to say, uh, Chef, or about our, the chef says volunteer. Tells yeah. you to volunteer. Yeah. Uh, volunteer. Yeah, it gives you like a letter of introduction, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with a letter. Uh, oop, wrong yeah. button. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Because then the investigation can be the task that they have to do, right? Yeah. Here's the uh, box. They all got disorganized together. They're all in the, the um, they're all in the, uh, what do you call it, where the trucks drop off all the stuff. Everything got mixed up. And you just get these boxes to the right booths. Yep. Mm -hmm. And deliver them, right? Yeah. Ooh. I like this. This so, is so this is interesting. I like this. Cause uh because now we're we're making them see 
Roars and Gamsby right um, at the start. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe part of this is you volunteer, and then when you go in later, well, now you have to be in costume. Maybe cosplay is not the start, but it's like uh, part of stealthing yeah. in. Yeah, disguise. Yeah. You see how to get to. Yes, and so then you're like, okay, well, now I don't wear this cosplay of looking like a belt. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we we've seen the 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 lunchable golem, so yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> maybe we haven't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So and then uh, scene three will be the volunteer tasks, uh, mm -hmm. actually doing them. I, uh, I like what little hug buddy said. Can we defeat these golems? You know, by eating them. I think <laughs> yes. Maybe. Yes. Uh, Yes, yeah, so it's pretty great. Yeah. So scene four. Special uh, rules for monster consumption. Exactly. <laughs> scene four. The PCs have uh, found their way to uh, uh, Gordon's. Uh, oh wait, wait. Roarsden's. Roarsden's. <laughs> Roarsden's green room. Um, <laughs> and it's guarded. And it's guarded. By, ooh, I got to do a rainbow, rainbow puke. Uh, it's guarded by who is it guarded by? It's guard. Oh, it's guarded by the the. It's guarded by a, a small army of what were they? What did we call them? The the golems. Yeah. Uh, who's who's, who's oh, was it? Oh no, uh, ground beef golems. Ground beef golems. Who, beef golems. who brought up that idea? Oops, you got it. Uh, that was uh. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, so guarded by uh, a legion of ground beef, ground beef golems, golems. and uh, so they act as a swarm, or several swarms. They act as a couple of swarms, <laughs> and you can spend an action to stab one with a fork and eat some of the golems. This I mean, does like great. I don't know two d six damage or whatever. We'll figure it. Out. We'll yeah, figure it out. Whatever we stats like. If, right? if you dip them, if you dip them in the in the sauce first, it's easier to they, they get. Them. Oh yeah, it's like a thin <laughs> can plan, right? If you, uh -huh. if you dip it and then eat it, if you eat them faster. I like them. that. Oh, <laughs> cover them in sauce. Cover them in sauce and get a bonus. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Moment. Moment for eating. This is really good. I love it when you can use the environment. So that's yes. great. <laughs> Bar barbecued uh, your attacks. Uh, do one d six extra spice damage. Spicy. Uh, I don't know what else would we put on these beef golems. Uh, uh, you know, would we'll go with steak sauce, right? Steak sauce. Oh, fair. Uh, you. Uh, you'll. <laughs> You, it's like cool ranch. I don't know. Yeah, cheese, yeah. Cheese, cheese, a nice cheese glaze. Yeah. Cheese. Yeah. You, you gain one d four temp hit points. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. 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 The glaze. Uh, let's see. What what what, what, what happens glaze? when you eat the vegan ones? They've got to have vegan ones, right? Oh, they do. Yeah. Some of these have to be vegan. Uh, you know. Yeah, so uh, what happens when you eat a, a vegan one? Yeah. Uh, you take. It, it, it probably tastes terrible, but. It's got to give you a better part, right? I mean, as, I, I as the like... representative vegan on the the chat, I'm... <laughs> it's right. you, uh, vegan in the chat. Let's 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 oh, let's let's. You, let's get... you, you said you wanted a healthier option. Yeah, uh, for the healthier option. Yeah. Brown potato. Yeah, yeah. Healthier option. Uh, option. Uh, tofu terrors. Oh, uh, are one of the swarms. I like that. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Sweet potatoes. My goodness. That oh, is great. God. I feel yeah. like Roars and Gamby would have figured it out. You know, made sure it's tasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is cool. Let's see. So scene five, uh, because we never actually fight Roars and Gamby, scene five will be escape from the con. Okay. Right. And I don't fight. What's escape. <laughs> yeah, I feel escape. like, you know, maybe at the, the top of scene five, you know, maybe Gamby figures it out, and like yeah. you, you're starting to walk away, and you hear the shouts of alarm, like my oh. my ladle, my famous ladle, yeah, the ladle, <laughs> and uh, you donkey. He begins yeah. to chase you, <laughs> calling you a not a donkey. What would a a, a, a mule? <laughs> uh, and 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 you have to escape because Gamsby is too powerful for you. Mm -hmm. 
Can you, uh, and, you use, could yeah. you use instead of escape? Could you? Well, I, I guess it's still escape, but rather than just running mm -hmm. and letting everybody chase, could you talk your way out of it? Uh, so I think so, right? So uh, yeah. you can use use access to the friends you made along the way. Oh. Uh, Yes, yes. We have a reputation this mechanic. This Did you wrong, do those volunteer tasks well? <laughs> this is the wrong ladle. Hold on, I'll get you somebody to bring you the right one from... Yeah, oh, exactly. That's good. Yeah, you, I like you that. Could... So we... Oh, so many options. <laughs> Try to social your way out yep. uh -huh. as well. Uh, you know, convincing uh, the goons that uh, there's a different ladle. I however like that. that however like how, how, however the players decide to to define uh -huh. that um but i also like using your uh the access uh, to the friends you made along the way to help uh give you some space and right. redirect the, it's the uh, everybody, move, right? <laughs> everybody move right everybody move <laughs> oh man yeah because uh, i feel like no one probably likes Roars and Gamby. I think that's kind of the moral of these continued adventures. So yeah. maybe, uh, maybe the uh, volunteer coordinator is going to give us an out or something. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll stall him a little bit. You know, <laughs> we're not going to like yeah. open the door for you, but we'll we'll help a little, a little. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, and and we can come up with some other options for this as well. Uh, let's see. What is another way they can kind of it's not escape from the con? That's not right. We're escaping from Gamsby. Uh, right. Gamsby, the Gamsbino. <laughs> yeah, someone will someone will try to intimidate. What happens? What happens when somebody tries to, to intimidate? Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, who are you intimidating? I guess that's the question. Do you intimidate the crowds to provoke like a mass exodus from the con? Is is a uh, is our con ending at this moment? Because that would be an easy oh. way to get out. Yeah. Uh, you could try to intimidate the goons. You could crowd. Um, I, I, I think the volunt the other volunteers are your companions in this, yeah, and yeah. and they're they're there to help you. So I don't think you want to invent the you can volunteers. Do that right. thing. Take this back to the cosplay. You do the multi door. You go in this door. They come out the door with the costume. You go in another door. The, the the whole like running through doors and appearing in different places. <laughs> we do that yeah. Hanna Barbera motif. Yes, of, absolutely. Of doors, right? We provide the <laughs> Benny Hill soundtrack and <laughs> exactly. Oh man, oh this is fun. And then if you have, like, you have four successes before you have two failures or three failures, then congratulations, you've navigated this this hallway. Did you yeah. just make a secret skill challenge? <laughs> Did I? I, I would love never it. do that. Uh, oh man, this Amazing. is this, this, this seems like okay. So so <laughs> it's a whole a convention farce. It's a whole adventure path. I love that. Um, <laughs> So, so, so the thing I, I like about this 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 adventure that that we've just outlined here, and I think this is the entire adventure already, is that there is some opportunities for some very light combat. Yeah. Uh, there is some opportunities for some really good deep role play, uh, yeah. and there's some really fun ways to to show some of these things with with different skill challenges and uh, right. use of skills. And the last thing I, I do want to say about this is that although we were talking in D&D &D terms, this is a very agnostic uh, kind of adventure where we could easily slap this into Shadowrun or World of Darkness or uh, Dark Sun. Dark Dark. Sun. Oh, man. Ooh, Dark Sun. That would be great. <laughs> right? We, we could put it anywhere. So this is, this is a ton of fun. Um, I do have one quick announcement that I want to go ahead and let the, the, all, all the explorers know is that the uh, new Pantheon uh, Academia today is, uh, is, is going to be canceled, unfortunately. Uh, some no. people are, are, are re recouping and recovering, and uh, we wish them the best on that. Oh. And uh, hopefully they'll be back next week. So, oh, man. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's right about time for, for this segment. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dickie, for hanging thank out you. with us Absolutely. and making this adventure. And uh, everybody pay attention to the streams. Uh, and when Dickie's games start rolling out, we'll let you know. As well Thanks. as when we see volunteer opportunities for you folks, if you guys want to go volunteer at cons, we'll let you guys know. Wait. Like, oh, by the way, 
uh, yeah. you know, so and so con is looking for volunteers. So awesome. thank you again. And uh, let's let's do our little wrap up, Rich. Thank you. <laughs> and, All right. Uh, oh man, that was a that was a great show. Uh, I wanna, that was awesome. That was I want to make sure and thank our guests, Dicky, the amazing Dicky Adams, uh, the and the fantastic Keith Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, two incredible heroes. I'm glad they were both able to join us. That was, oh, such a good good series of discussions. Yeah. Oh man, and uh, you know, just a little preview on next week. Next week we are going to have two special guests once again. Uh, the first guest is going to be amazing game designer uh, Tracy Barnett. Uh, they are an indie game designer, and I think uh, I think they have an indie game that they they got over to us for us to check out a little bit. So that's going to be yeah. a ton of fun. Um, additionally, we're going to have uh, Dr. Uh, Jessica Hebert, PhD, uh, an amazing scientist who is going to sit down and chat with me on ways that we can be safe uh, in this in this upcoming convention season in this upcoming like world post uh, pandemic where we're all getting vaccinated and kind of, kind of help us get back to the table. And I'm very excited about yeah. that discussion as well. Start the nerd times up again. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm super excited about all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Jessica Hebert is also part of the amazing nerd group, the PDX Broadsides. So yeah. that will be a ton of fun. Uh, all right, uh, Rich, where can people, where can the people, where can our friends, oh my where goodness. can people see you and hang out with you in these next week? Well, Anything they can look for? Uh, for me, uh, definitely check out uh, my Twitter at rmalina. Um, I don't think I have any projects releasing right now, uh, which is nice. Um, but my Academy of Adventures Kickstarter will be launching on May 3rd. So, uh, so we'll keep talking about that as we get closer. Um, I just also need to point out that, of course, it came. I don't know if you've noticed this whole time. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you too can get your own saving throw t-shirt um it's it's very comfy the blue mm -hmm. heather um there's a yeah ask dom dom will send you the links <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah totally check the links in the uh chat um and then uh as far as the exploration society goes make sure to check us out and uh pop over to the patreon follow us there uh sign up and join <laughs> our discord uh you come and chat with us tell us tell us what you think about these segments tell us yeah. folks who you are looking forward to seeing uh people we can reach out to uh, you know anything really that will help make the show better for you we want to we want to hear it so hop into discord and let us know um and then you can uh find me uh, throughout the week i'll be djing over on my stream at dj pirate rabbits and uh, if you like house music, come hang out there. Otherwise, I'll be back here next Sunday uh, for more Owlbear Soup. So, Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. I can't wait. So it's going to be a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, thank you, everyone, so much for coming and hanging out with us. And uh, we will see you all next week.